Hi, welcome back Weld 2 family. My name is David Sinisa and today we're going to be doing this weld on this 6 inch 304 stainless steel and our friends here from Superheat are going to go ahead and anneal it for us. Let's get to it. And don't forget to check out weldlife.com, your one stop shop for all your welding and industrial needs. Alright guys, so I got this 6 inch schedule 80 304 stainless steel pipe here that we're going to go ahead and TIG weld all the way out. After we're done with this weld, our friends from Superheat here are going to put those ceramic heater pads and they're going to take this weld all the way up to 2200 degrees for the annealing process. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start on our root pass. I got the Pipeworks 400 turned to about 88 amps for our root pass. So I'm going to go ahead and grind my tie-in, which is my top tack coming up. And I'm also going to grind a little bit on my start just to help heat it up for a good tie-in. All right, guys, so we'll be using the freehand technique here on the bottom. Now I'm just starting on our bottom tack, warming it up. Stainless has a real watery puddle, but it flows nicely side to side, so you just got to be smooth with your filler wire. You know, this weld's going to endure a lot of stress later. It's going to get really, really hot during the annealing process. Same thing, guys, just a nice, smooth feed rate at the bottom. Now, you don't want to try coming too much wire or moving too fast. Well, stainless does have a watery puddle, it wants to drop out on you a little bit. You know, we are welding with no landing, so it means it's a sharp edge. It is a 5.30 second gap with a 1 8 filler wire. Now our filler wire is 308, it's the most common wire used on a 304 stainless steel. You know, and just basically refill everything that you ground out. You know, my personal preference is walking the cup on the upper quarters when I can. You know, it's not always feasible. You don't always have enough room to be doing that. But when I can, it just helps me be a little more stable. I have a lot more control of my puddle. Making sure I get that edge melted in. Just refilling. Just walking all the way through that tack. All right, guys, so we're on our last quarter. I've already turned down the purge. I'm nice and slow going to the tie-in. You know, especially since this is my last tie-in and I can't see it, I'm actually going to back up a little bit, reheat until I see the puddle kind of dance and sink down a little bit. It's going to give me a good indication that I've pretty much fused inside. Go ahead and walk forward. Start walking up. That way we don't leave a pinhole in the root. All right guys, so we got our root all put in there. I'm gonna go ahead and start our hot pass. You know, I've got our machine set at 150 amps. Gonna use 1 8 wire and just walk all the way from the bottom up. Try not to stop or pause anywhere. Just set myself up in a body position where I can go from the bottom all the way to the top. Now here on a hot pass, you just wanna sweep side to side, making sure you clean up basically any unevenness in your root. You know, we just wanna lay a good clean foundation for our fill and also protect our root pass. You know, the less times you have to stop, pick up that grinder, Usually a better, cleaner weld you can have. Don't forget to check out weldlife.com for all your welding needs. Alright, so we got the Pipeworks 400 turned up to 175 amps. Again, for the fills, I'm going to keep using 1 8 wire here. Same thing, just keep layering from the bottom all the way up. Another fill pass, just, you know, just trying to build up some metal. Don't try to push too much wire at once. You don't want to leave it all lumpy. You know, just move a constant rate forward. Don't stay in one spot. You don't want to burn this thing this up either. You know, we're going to be alternating from side to side. You might see me two, two consecutive passes on each side. But then I'll alternate, do the same thing on the other. That's just to help keep the piece straight. We don't want to warp it. You know, I always walk a little past where I stopped the last time. That's just to stagger the stop. All right, guys. So we've already got the piece already all flushed out. I'm going to go ahead and start our cap pass. I'm using a number eight cup. One-eighth tungsten. 
You know, as a CWI, I see a lot of guys worried about going straight. It makes the weld look really pretty, really consistent. But what really matters is that you're covering your bevel edges, that you make it, you know, you're basically covering and making that weld joint correct. Nice and full. I like to tell a lot of guys that are learning, you know, just worry about making it acceptable. Make a good, clean weld. The prettiness will come with time. That's just a lot of practice. All right, guys, gonna put the second bead. You know, this is gonna be a two bead cap. Same thing, just try to keep a nice even walk. One eighth wire. All right, so we put our first cap pass. You know, it is above flush. It's just a little bit flat for my liking. So I'm gonna go ahead and put another two passes on it. You know, just stack that metal up a little bit more. Give it a more defined profile. Higher machine at 160 amps. And I ended up changing up to a number 12 cup. And same thing, bottom up, two bead cap. All right guys, so all I'm gonna do here with this 332nd is I'm just, just trying to build a little bit more height on my cap. You know, this well is gonna be subjective to some really high temps. So I just wanna make sure that got enough material on it. You know, this 332 technique, it's a good technique, especially when, you know, you're not quite convinced that that cap's tall enough or, you know, you just want to see a little bit more defined profile. You just, you know, do another pass right over the top of your existing cap. All right, guys, so there you have it. I showed you guys how to weld this 6-inch Schedule 80 304 stainless steel. Now, the fun part begins and we're getting ready to anneal this piece. Solution annealing is a heat treatment process which alters the metallurgical structure of a material to change its mechanical or electrical properties. Typically, this process is used to decrease metal crack sensitivity of aged material that needs to be returned to a weldable state. Solution annealing will affect secondary carbides precipitated during extended high temperature service by increasing ambient temperature ductility and fracture toughness. This process involves air quenching post heat application also referred to in field terminology as a hot strip. Hey, well, two family, we just got this weld back from David Ceriza. It's a stainless steel 304. We're gonna start the annealing process on this. What we have here is our Seifer wire. This wire is a little different than the regular TC wire we use for any other post-weld heat treatment. Since this is going up to such high temperatures, it's a different cave coating on it. So okay. right now we're gonna begin set. doing the TC process and then we're gonna continue with the heaters and we're gonna get this thing wrapped up. Yeah, guys, these are our high temp heaters. This one's gonna be a special episode for you. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this. We're gonna take this thing up over 2000 degrees. Uh, we're gonna start the setup process on it right now. We'll get through that. And then uh, the next phase of this, we'll be ramping this thing up super, super hot and then stripping it um, at over 2000 degrees. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this. Okay, well, two family, time has come. We finally reached our temperature of 2150 on this stainless anneal. We're gonna go ahead and get Chris to head over here and we're gonna start taking everything apart. What we're gonna do is called an air quench. So with further ado, we'll get over here and get it going. Air quenching post heat application, also referred to in field terminology, as a hot stripping enables the product to recrystallize without any additional precipitates forming. After the metal is cooled, the resulting product is often much more ductile with a reduced hardness allowing it to be much more workable. The resulting product is also a stress-free product with increased corrosion resistance. All right guys, so there you have it. Showed you guys how to weld out and the superheat guys anneal this uh, six inch Schedule 80 304 stainless steel pipe. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I know we did. Um, it's always exciting to work with these guys here at WeldTube, especially David Sariza. So thanks for having us out.